Hello, welcome to the House of Wellness. I'm Luke Darcy and I'm here with my great friend and colleague, Joe Stanley. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Darcy, and happy Father's Day to you, you. and all the other dads celebrating today. Did you get spoiled with breakfast in bed? Did the kids... I'll tell you what, I'm very happy, Joe, because finally my four kids have been watching the House of Wellness and they bought me SW23 by Shane Warne. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. Did you not notice? Oh, you smell amazing. Thank you, Joe. Um, <laughs> finally, they've uh, clued it. What about Daz? Uh, did Willow fire something up for him this morning? Yes, Willow is a bit of a whiz in the kitchen these days, so she pulled together probably some uh, fried tomato and some lovely eggs <laughs> and, you know, she likes to bring us food all the time. Well done, Willow, <laughs> and uh, happy Father's Day, Daz, and all the dads out there. Melbourne is still in stage four lockdown at the moment. The rest of the country facing ever-changing restrictions, so it's not an easy time for everyone out there, Joe. So some families who are separated and older dads that might be in aged care, we're really feeling for that group of people particularly. Yeah, it is a very different Father's Day. So, Daz, we're lucky to live in the age of technology. I know it's not quite the same as the real thing, but... Thank goodness that there are video hookups. And for those who can be together at home, you could get the camping gear out for some backyard glamping or watch a movie outdoors. You could have some games at night or cook Dad his favourite meal. You know, we recently popped a tent in our lounge room and we did a, a, a camping night in our lounge room. It was for camp quality, actually, as a fundraiser for them. And it was awesome. We got to snuggle up with the Labrador in the, <laughs> in the tent. Which right. is a great cause, camp quality. Can I say, you weren't adventurous enough to go out in the backyard, Joe. You, know, you went <laughs> in the living room. I'm not an outdoorsy type. <laughs> <laughs> However you do it uh, today, it's all about the 4.6 million Aussie dads and sporting legends Sir John Kerwin and Paul Ruse, along with Paul's beautiful wife, Tammy, will be here to give us some inspiration as well, Joe. And today is all about loving and supporting the men in our lives. I want to say to my beautiful husband, Daz, happy Father's Day. He is an incredible dad to our willow. And I'm sure your kids say the same about you, Daz. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try my best. But, you know, the great thing is I love watching the way my husband, Daz, is with Willow. Like, he plays with her in a completely different way to the way I do. You know, he's very... They wrestle, they get outdoors, they do basketball together and it's always... You know, they'll even get out on the skateboard, which terrifies me. But <laughs> it's so important that dads have that with their kids. And what's interesting is that new research shows that dads play a unique role, especially when it comes to their kids' emotional development and willingness to take risks. Dr Justin Coulson is a parenting expert and a dad who studied the science behind dads and the way they raise their kids. So what better way to lead our Father's Day special on life? Let's get into the parenting trenches. It's going to sound corny, but I've never really felt so much love in my heart. You know, I never thought I'd, I'd be able to have that much love. Um, but my heart has grown and, you know, they're incredible. I just love being around my kids. Michael Bowers is still pretty new to the dad game. He and his wife, Sarah, are the proud parents of one-year-old twins, Francesca and Isabel. They are non-identical twins. They've both got completely different personalities. Uh, Frankie is very boisterous and outgoing, uh, whereas Isabel uh, is more quiet, reserved, and is more happy just sitting down and looking at her sister. Absolutely more emotional than I thought it would be, um, but in the best possible way, right? Again, your emotions will will stretch a lot, a lot farther than you think that you would have ever been able to do. But um, you know, it's just been an incredible journey and um, has totally changed my life. As Michael navigates his new life as a dad, according to new research, how he interacts and plays with his twins will make a big difference to their development. Dads with their little kids, they rile them up, uh, they get them all excited, they scare them, they chuck them up into the air and catch them, they throw them into the pool. Dads just sort of rough house and rough and tumble a lot more than mums. And it actually seems to be really good for kids that they have that experience. Psychologist Dr Justin Coulson puts his actions into practice. He specialises in the science of parenting and as a father to six kids, 
He knows a thing or two about dad play. Research has linked this rough housing kind of play, the exciting, unpredictable sort of stuff, to foster these skills. The first one is that they learn how to, um, how to moderate and regulate their emotions better. There's something about having dad getting them really rolled up, but also saying, we need to draw the line, you've just gone too far. It's not okay to slap someone in the face, or it's not, allowed, it's not okay to scream and shout and carry on like that. Another thing that they learn is they learn about risk, and that's really important for children because they learn what their limits are in safe ways when dad's around. They help them to take risks that are safe. I guess there's a difference between understanding risk and being a risky person. And dad's help their children to learn that. Rough and tumble play isn't just for the boys. Justin has six daughters who all get their fair share of specialty dad play. One thing that really stands out to me when I look at what's happening with parents today is that we're more involved with our children than perhaps ever before. Now that's both good and bad. Our children need us to be involved, they need us to care. They don't need us to coddle. They don't need us to cotton wool bubble wrap and protect them from the world. They're supposed to have challenges and difficulties, that's how they get stronger. And when we take them away from those challenges and difficulties, they're going to be forever reliant on us. And that makes us feel really good. It's really nice to have the kids relying on us. But our job is to help them to deal with these things wisely, safely, in healthy ways, on their own. It's something that empty nester Gary Clare has learnt through his 30 years of fatherhood. Little new newborns, you're just worried all the time. You're just checking to see if they're still breathing. And it's just, ah, you know. Then you get a little bit more relaxed. They get to go to school. Uh, they start to maybe walk to school, find their way back. You give them a little bit more leeway. And then obviously once they get out of school and into the workforce, and maybe they get partnered, maybe they get their own homes, then I think the trick is with the older kids, learning to let go. Let them maybe make their mistakes, go out into the world, but be there if they need Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I don't know many primary school students in the 90s who knew all about Vince Jones' spell. That's... And while there's no guaranteed recipe for success in the parenting game, here's Justin's top eight tips. Be a role model. Your kids are always watching you. Be adventurous. Try new things. Teach kids to learn. Let them find the answer. Get chatty. Never be too busy to talk. Tool them up so they're ready for learning. Ditch the rewards. The more we reward, the less interested kids become. And the last two? The golden uh, double, I don't know what you call that. You know, you know when you get the first two things right, whatever that's called, if you want your kids to do really well academically in life, you want them to be curious and you want them to be conscientious. Those two things are the biggest predictors of which children will do really well in their academic life and even in other areas. No matter what stage of the parenting journey you're on, it's all about getting the most out of every precious minute. It really does go very quickly, especially that, that early time. I was coaching uh, the soccer and, and going to um, netball and softball, and you look back and you think, that was a great time, I really enjoyed that, you know, going afterwards and having a meal and things like that. That goes very, very quickly. I didn't realise how much time I had before I had kids, and now every single bit matters, so I really appreciate the time nowadays. You know, what, what can you get someone that already has everything? I'm, I'm happy. Well, being a dad has to be one of the most challenging things you could ever do, Joe. Mm -hmm. in my mind. There's no rule book, as you know. I always describe it as a thing that you want to be best at, but to probably struggle and fumble your way through <laughs> it at times. But I tell you what is great to see so many young AFL players having kids and working out how to be the best dad they can be. Very inspiring. So to prepare them for what's ahead, we gave them some help with an area that's very important to becoming a good dad, and that's telling a good dad joke. I got my best mate a fridge for his birthday. Can't wait to see his face light up when he opens it. <laughs> what do you call a cow with a twitch? Beef jerky. <laughs> Oh, that's just all right, not bad. What do you call a man with a rubber toe? Don't know. <laughs> Roberto. <laughs> My coach and I sense, share a sense of humour. We have to. He doesn't have one. <laughs> that's true. 
Well, what do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? Your elephant. <laughs> it's actually really funny. What's Forrest Gump's Facebook password? One Forrest, one. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> My dog used to chase people on a bike a lot. It got so bad, I had to take his bike away. <laughs> What's a ninja's favourite type of shoes? Sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Burns. I have to bring the actions in, otherwise you're not going to laugh. <laughs> Now, Joe, we are very fond of a clinical trial here on the House of Wellness, and one that is of particular interest is from a research team at the University of South Australia. They've made a major breakthrough that could transform the quality of life for men battling prostate cancer. It's very exciting in this area of health, Dars. They're trialling a new formulation of a drug that's currently being used to treat prostate cancer that will dramatically improve its effectiveness. And it's all because this drug doesn't easily dissolve in water. So when it's taken, only 10% of it is absorbed and 90% passes through the body as waste. It's crazy when you think about it, Joe. So what the researchers have done is found a better solution for dissolving the drug so it's way more effective. Would you believe 40% more effective Here's lead researcher Dr Hayley Schultz with more. So we developed a lipid-based formulation, or more simply, uh, a formulation that used oils uh, to pre-dissolve the drug in that oil. So then when it enters the gut, it's pre-dissolved, which essentially allows greater absorption of the drug from the gut and to enter into uh, the systemic circulation where it can travel around the body and have its therapeutic effect. So I take a... Uh, doesn't have this ability because the drug is in the crystalline state. So it has really slow dissolution and really low um, absorption. And, yeah, it's pretty incredible that 90% of that administered dose ends up being totally wasted down the toilet. It's very inefficient. How much of an improvement in effectiveness do you think we'll see? So um, after a lot of studies in the lab, we moved into preclinical trials and we saw that the absorption was improved by 40%, which was fantastic. And by improving the absorption, if we see this in human clinical trials, um, we'd be able to reduce the dose, which means um, a smaller amount of drug going into the bodies of these patients, um, which can then potentially help with side effects. Also, if we improve the absorption, we'd expect that we'd remove that food effect. So patients can actually take the drug um, independent of their meals, so they don't have to uh, sort out their day-to-day -day lives around their medication and meal times. So I think this could really improve the day-to-day -day lives of these prostate cancer patients. So how did you come up with the, the concept of uh, you know, oil-based medication that was going to be able to, to be absorbed better? Was it uh, a, a bright spark moment for you that you thought this is going to work? <laughs> so lipid-based or oil-based formulations have been around for over 50 years and there's lots of different variations of them and there's been a lot of research uh, using them. It's just the fact that it hadn't yet been applied to this drug and this drug has the perfect properties for um, a really good improvement in absorption using an oil because basically um, this drug has a really big food effect and that's because it dissolves better in oils and fats in the body. So if we uh, pre-dissolve the drug in an oil to begin with, uh, we knew that we'd be able to uh, improve the absorption quite considerably. And how close are you to, uh, to getting your formula, your oil-based formula, Hayley, uh, into the market and, uh, and better effective use for so many people who need it? So these preclinical trials were great, but we still need to do human clinical trials and to do that, we need to find a sponsor or investor who can help us uh, fund the clinical trials because they're not cheap, uh, very expensive. Um, but if we can find an investor, we could um, get this into humans, get some really great data. And within two years, we could do the clinical trials and then hopefully that could progress to the market. Well, really encouraging to hear these great stories, Joe. Some things being done in the area of medical research also makes you appreciate being in good health. And lots of guys have their physical health under control, but sometimes 
the mental health is, is the thing that gets left unchecked. It's so true, Das, and the men in our lives are definitely worth caring for. That's physically and emotionally. And one man who's made that his mission is proud dad and master herbalist, Gerald Quigley. As we get older, our cholesterol levels tend to rise. We can keep things in balance by increasing our fibre intake. And take a look at beta-glucan fibre, which acts as an absorbent in our gastrointestinal tract. Foods like onions and ginger, yoghurt, alfalfa sprouts, they help as well. And fish is an excellent source of protein. And don't forget aged garlic extract capsules. One twice a day will also play a role. Having a daily shave can be quite stressful to the delicate skin on our face. And to reduce the risk of rash, make sure you lather up well with a low soap shaving cream. And when you're finished, use the thermal spring water to settle your skin down. Don't forget then to use a moisturiser and use the moisturiser again at night before you go to bed. That way it will keep your skin healthy and free from any rashes. I've had a number of viewers asking about thinning hair. Now, our hair health is a reflection on our general health, can be affected by stress, particularly at the moment. The two nutrients involved are silica and iron. So silica in liquid gel form and iron in a non-constipating form. You can also use the revitalising products that are available in shampoo and leave-in conditioners to just try and make sure that your hair is as healthy as it possibly can be. And remember, if symptoms persist, always ask your healthcare practitioner. But most importantly, live well, be well, stay well. And a big congrats to Gerald, who's welcomed a new grandson, Zach, into the family, his daughter Kate having her first bub just recently. He's a very proud granddad, Darth. Great news. Congratulations, uh, GQ. Very happy for you and the family. I stick around as rugby legend Sir John Kerwin tackles the all-important area of men's mental health. That's coming up next on The House of Wellness. You're watching the House of Wellness. It's Father's Day, so we've lined up a few topics that may interest some of the men out there today. Joe, men's mental health has always been a big one for us, and it can be tough for some guys to open up if something is bothering them, but the stigma and reluctance to talk is slowly changing, Joe. Unfortunately, the statistics in this area are still pretty grim, though. The number of men who die by suicide in Australia every year is nearly double the national road toll. But you're right, Das, the message that speaking up and asking for help is a real sign of strength is slowly getting through, thank goodness. And a couple of weeks back, I had the honour of chatting with one of the all-time great people we've had on the House of Wellness, and that's All Black superstar Sir John Kerwin. It's one of the favourite interviews, Joe, that I uh, had the pleasure of doing on this show. He's entertaining, inspiring and completely open about his own battle with, with mental health. Well, we couldn't possibly fit it all into just one episode and the great things that JK had to share. So this week, we're bringing you part two. I sort of felt that what we needed to be able to do was deliver the tools and techniques that keep me incredibly well, but in an amazing, engaging way, because... As you will know, all this information is out there, but it's boring as batshit, right? <laughs> so what we need to be able to do is to deliver it to people where they are on the mental health spectrum. You know, if you're just anxious about losing your job or anxious about anything, you should have those tools and techniques to keep yourself well on a daily basis. So that was the, that was the big motivation behind Mentimia, to deliver a really engaging tool. I wanted to change the dialogue. I don't know if you notice when I talk about mental health, I'm talking about my monkey and, <laughs> and you know, my sharks and all that sort of stuff because I can't actually spell what the psychiatrist would tell me for the right <laughs> word. <laughs> you know, and a monkey brain is rumination in the mind. But, but so changing the dialogue as well because mental health dialogue is steeped in real big negativity and that's why there's still a stigma around it. Now, when you talk about mental health, people go, I'm not suicidal. But mental health is like physical health. We've all got it. Yeah. And in our lives, we're going to be up and down. So, I, uh, you know, we wanted to deliver a tool that was incredibly engaging, meets you where you are, and is really easy to have habitual change. And I love your passion for education. We are talking before about uh, schools. You've got three of your own children and the education system doesn't feel like the old system has caught up with the language you're talking now about emotional well-being, about understanding your own mental health, and it's a passion that you're pursuing as well. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I always say that I was a generation behind my dad. I mean, I couldn't get away with shit with him because he'd done it all himself, you know? Like, <laughs> so, but now I think I'm five generations away from my kid. I don't know the world that they live in, yeah. especially with this thing here, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I wrote a book called Stand By Me because I wanted to, um, I've written a couple of books, All Blacks Don't Cry, but Stand By Me was about me trying to parent it in the home, right? And basically I got all of these whole lot of teenagers and kids together and spoke to them about it. That was really good fun. But the psychiatrist said to me, you know, if you want to change mental health in your home, you need to do two things. Sit down and have dinner every night. So that's easy. I'm married to an Italian, so that's going to happen, you know. <laughs> um, and the second thing is to show some vulnerability. And I'm going, whoa, you know. But it's amazing. If, if you show vulnerability, that gives everyone permission around you to show vulnerability. Yeah, I love your message, uh, JK. It's, it's uh, inspiring. And, and even on the home front with your own family, it resonates with me. And, you know, I think my wife and I have had a conscious choice to be as open as you can. And, and actually, I, I don't remember my parents, you know, remarkable parents, but there was never a conversation about, geez, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I made a mistake. Hey, I flew off the handle yesterday, which I did yesterday with my 16-year-old, so I apologise to him again. But it's, it's that conversation about, you know, what we're not perfect even as adults and we're learning and we're growing seems to be a bit of a language changer. Is that what you're doing with your own kids on the home front? Yeah, but I'm also saying I'm scared at the moment. Like COVID, coming yeah. out of COVID for me was amazing. I'm, I'm really fortunate because part of my mental health is I really understand my emotions and I make peace with them very quickly. But coming out of COVID, man, I was scared. Mm. Uh, I was anxious. I was resentful that people were driving around my neighbourhood again, you know? <laughs> All these different emotions that I had to make peace with. But if you're, for, for example, if you're sitting at the dinner table and you're talking about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really anxious about work tomorrow, you know, you just make it part of your conversation. You make these vulnerabilities part of your conversation. It gives the people around you, you know, the right to be vulnerable. And I think uh, that was the, one of the biggest lessons. And the, the conversation changes, right? Um, all of a sudden, you know, the first night, you're all looking at you thinking, oh, what's up with Dad? <laughs> then, you know, the next night they start being vulnerable. You've uh, achieved, you know, so many things and lived uh, an incredible uh, life of playing professional sport. But tell me about when someone in the street comes up and says, because you have been as open as you are, you've, you've saved my life. Tell me how, uh, how that feels. And I understand that happens to you quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, like I said, um, this, I mean, it's COVID, right? So I was at the supermarket the other day and this woman said, do you mind if I hug you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd love a hug. And she said, um, you saved my son. And I nearly cried, man, you know, like, um, so what it does for me, it gives me the courage to keep going and to keep trying to look at this differently and keep trying to... Uh, get on top of this as a problem. And so when people come up to me and say thank you, it gives me the courage to keep uh, trying to, you know, trying to help in any way that I can. JK, I could speak for another two hours. Uh, the, the passion you've got, and, and I share the same passion, and uh, helping people in the way that you are is, uh, is a remarkable legacy. Uh, aside from everything you achieved in the sporting field, this is uh, an amazing space. And I feel like we're going to need, as I said at the start, more and more of this information quickly because of the challenges we're facing post this pandemic. So it's been a real pleasure, a real honour to meet you, and thanks so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And, you know, just to finish, I think, for everyone, just to be kind, personally to themselves, um, understand their emotions, make peace with them, be kind to themselves, be kind to others, and we'll get through this, you know. And I also would like to challenge business leaders not to look at the bottom line, um, for a little while and just do the right thing by society. So I think that's an important thing as well. But it's been a pleasure being on with you. It's been my honour also to talk about mental health, so thank you. If you're one of the many Aussies who've quit smoking, amazing work, well done. And if you're thinking about it, why not check out the My Quit Buddy that's had a 310% increase in visitors compared to this time last year. That's just one of many options. It's a fantastic step in the right direction. And while no one said it's easy, the benefits and change in the way you feel begin the moment you butt out. <laughs>
Welcome back. Last week, we welcomed two new regulars to the House of Wellness, AFL legend and star Paul Roos and his beautiful wife, Tammy. These days, Paul and Tammy spend a lot of their time inspiring people on how to live their best lives. Joe. Tammy is a meditation teacher and best-selling author, and Paul, well, he's a legend on and off the footy field. Last week, they showed us ways to survive uncertainty. This week, it's all about shaking off the wintertime blues. All of us have been experiencing lockdown in some way, shape or form all around Australia since about March of this year. And it doesn't really matter in terms of to what capacity or to what level, but we all have had this sense of slowing down. But one thing I do know that we can actually embrace is that we can use this perhaps in a way that you haven't thought about before, which is we're in winter time right now. And winter is about slowing down. It is about restoring and resetting. It's about recharging our batteries. Growing up in Northern California, I used to experience this at the end of summer, I'd start to watch the squirrels as they were gathering their nuts and their acorns and they were going to storm away for the winter. We saw that the bears, again, they'd go into hibernation. So I was witnessing this growing up, but then actually that's what I was doing as well. I was slowing down. So when we come home and we're in this state of winter, it is about, okay, what can I do to actually nurture myself and recharge my batteries? It's about those foods that fill us up, the soups, the really warm and hearty meals, perhaps having a cozy environment at home. If you have a fire, you light the fire. Do you have rugs or big pillows? And you know, it's more about just slowing down, but really giving yourself permission, okay? It's really important to understand you don't have to be going all the time. Instead of being externally focused, let's bring everything internally and know that this is something that you can do that is seriously going to benefit you mentally, emotionally, spiritually and physically. Look, we all know it's winter and it's a bit chilly outside and it's been a challenge for all of it and someone that's been in an active field for so long, I've felt somewhat restricted. But what can I do? I started playing football as a 17 year old at Fitzroy. So I was always outdoors, always active and always training. It's been incredibly challenging, hasn't it, for all of us to be in this situation where we've been locked down. What can I do for my health? Really, really important. I am fortunate I've got a little gym in the garage, so I'm able to do small workouts. For those of you who haven't though, I mean, what you can do is just do your body weights, do your push-ups, do your sit-ups. The other things that I love, I wander around the house at times and I'll grab a chair and I'll do some step-ups on a chair. The table, the kitchen table, let me tell you what that's good for. I can do some push-ups on the kitchen table. So there's always things around your house. Obviously we can get outside and exercise, taking the dog for a walk, heading down the park, kicking the football. Get off your backside when you can and let's get outside and let's really stay healthy. Paul was named the 2008 Australian Father of the Year and he and Tammy are parents to two sons. They're a great family and have some brilliant things to say and they really do lead by example. Joe, always great to catch up with the Roosers. Yeah, they have a great way of breaking down information into practical things anyone can do, lockdown or no lockdown. Getting outdoors, our diet, sleep patterns and all kinds of lifestyle choices have a big impact on our body and immune system, which is the first defence against infection. How well it can do this really does begin with the everyday decisions we make at home, Das. Absolutely, Joe. And Luke Heinze Hines is a big advocate for building immunity through food. Let's take a look. Amy, we hear all about the importance of looking after our immune system, but for those who don't know, what role does our immune system play in our body? So our immune system plays a pretty important role in our body. It is effectively an immunological army that protects us against any pathogens. We're not the only living creatures on this earth. We have viruses, bacteria, fungi, all manner of bugs that can make us sick. So there's a lot that we can do to help our immune system function at its very best. And so the more we look after it, the more it can look after us. I love that you've referred to it as a little bit of an army inside our body. So what are some of the key nutrients we're looking for in our food that can help support our immune system? So on a cellular level, all nutrients are important, of course, but for our immunological army, they really need good levels of things like vitamin C, zinc, vitamin A and vitamin D. 
OK, so vitamin C has definitely got to be one of the most common that most people know. Citrus fruits, but then mm. in vegetables, things mm -hmm. like, I mean, red capsicum we've got here, even broccoli is a great source. Yes, that's right. So with vitamin C, it's a water-soluble nutrient, meaning you've got to consume it every single day. And it's very sensitive to heat, so those foods should ideally be eaten raw or just very lightly cooked. All right, I'm going to be eating all of these oranges. <laughs> Next, I want to focus on vitamin A and zinc. How do they work hand in hand? So they do have independent benefits that help the immune system in various ways, but together they're actually really important for the health of our lung tissue. And so any time we catch something that we're fighting off, that can really cause tissue damage. All right, I've got to say, when it comes to vitamin A, I love celebrating foods like eggs, dairy and fatty fish. Mm -hmm. And for zinc, the clear winners for me are things like shellfish, nuts and seeds, and my number one favourite, dark <laughs> chocolate. What about you? How do you get it? Yeah, I'd definitely be keen on all of those things, but I tell you what is probably a standout for me is pâté, because pâté actually combines vitamin A and zinc in the single food. Got the vitamin C, we got the vitamin A and zinc. What about vitamin D? What role does that play in our immune function? Oh, how long have you got, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, how nice is it to be out in the fresh air? But I've got to say, we're probably not getting much <laughs> vitamin D right now. I'm afraid not, Luke. It's that time of year where not enough UVB is coming through. So vitamin D plays a really important role in our immune system. The most important one to understand is the way in which it helps our body fight off germs. If you have good levels of vitamin D, your immune system can mount an effective response. However, if they're too low, you're going to struggle to fight off Things like viruses and bacteria. So if you haven't made enough during summer and you're not getting enough through your diet, some people might need to take vitamin D as a supplement. The best thing you can do is speak to your healthcare practitioner to get the right advice for you. Lifestyle factors are also really important when it comes to having a healthy immune system. Things like stress and lack of sleep can really depress our immune function. So all in all, having a good belly laugh is very good for immunity too. Amy, I'm feeling well equipped, mm -hmm. but seeing as you have said how important laughing is, <laughs> have you got a joke to kind of sign us off today? Here's a very terrible joke, Luke. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's that? Interrupting cow. Interrupting Moo. cow. You, <laughs> you got me there. I told you it was You bad. got me there. <laughs> Cows get lots of vitamin D. <laughs> they do, they do. Welcome back. We've had our fair share of bad news this year. And how about this to restore your faith in the world, Joe? 25 years ago, thousands of children in Africa were paralysed with polio, which, as we know, attacks the nervous system. But thanks to the polio vaccine, Africa has just recently been declared polio-free. It's absolutely brilliant, Dars. It's been a mammoth exercise that was propelled by Nelson Mandela, who launched the Kick Polio Out of Africa program in 1996. And now more than 95% of Africa's population has been immunised. Great legacy of uh, Nelson Mandela. Two out of three strains of wild polio virus have been eradicated worldwide, and now Africa is free of the last remaining strain of the wild polio virus. That is some good news. Well, toning your waistline and getting a flatter tummy in time for summer isn't easy, especially if you're a Victorian. However, excess belly fat can increase your risk of many diseases and it can also make you feel quite bloated, so that's not a good feeling. Whether you want a ripped midsection or to improve your gut health, Heinz and GQ have a messy breakfast of champions that will help you eat and feel a whole lot cleaner. Gerald, it's pretty lucky you're not here in the kitchen with me today because I tell you what, I'm using ingredients that are alive. Really, Heinzy, I thought you were making a breakfast eaten mess. Have I missed something? Nah, nah, look, I'm being a little bit cheeky here. I'm talking about alive in the fact that this yoghurt that I'm using is full of good bacteria. So often it's referred to as yoghurt cultures, mate. And that's when the lactose, the natural sugars in yoghurt, are fermented. Now, it's this good bacteria that we get that also creates that incredible texture and taste that we love in yoghurt. And it's going to be the perfect combination with the crunch from the nuts and seeds and, of course, the sweetness from the berries in this recipe. It's interesting, Hanji, that you speak of beneficial bacteria. Most people think bacteria are negative. They're, they're, they've got a bad image. But, in fact, they are really important because they contribute so much to our gut health. And look, GQ, with our gut often referred to as our second brain, it is really important we look after it, right? 
Well, not only do beneficial bacteria support a healthy microbiome, and that's the trillions of bacteria we have in our system, both in and on our body, but they also contribute to a healthy immune system and a healthy digestive system. I tell you what, that is some pretty nifty bacteria. And the good news is you can actually find good bacteria in other fermented foods. I'm talking things like kombucha, sauerkraut and kimchi. Well, some pretty intense flavours there, Hansi, but if you're not a fan of those flavours, you can be reassured that the beneficial bacteria are available in a probiotic supplement. Well, I tell you what, GQ, I am pro-probiotics after hearing all the benefits of good bacteria. And I have a feeling you are going to be pro this breakfast-eaten mess. Check it out. Just let me have a look at that, Heimsy. Haha, <laughs> watch out. Nah, just kidding. It's good bacteria, remember? The A to Z of vitamins is brought to you by LifeSpace. We can all be living innovation. From creating a healthy and delicious breakfast mess to tidying up your lips, here's our go-to makeup gal, Jade, with an all-natural way to achieve the perfect pout. We're just coming out of winter, approaching spring. We've spent more time indoors than ever. Our skin, our body, everything just seems to be dehydrated. And I think a lot of us are always worried about putting that moisture back into our face. One part of our face that doesn't get the love that it probably should is our lips. And they can become dehydrated and cracked. And no one wants a cracked lip when applying a beautiful lip shade or our makeup for every day. One product that you can use that really hydrates your lips is the Burt's Bees Vanilla Bean Lip Balm. They're natural, there's no nasties, parabens, all the words I can't say, there's none of that in this product. So I love in my morning routine to just simply apply like so. It's really natural and it's got all that beautiful vitamin E and shea butter. It leaves your lips feeling really smooth and hydrated. And I often actually, once I've applied a nude lip in the day, I'll just top it up by using this beautiful lip balm directly on top. The smell of vanilla reminds me of my childhood and it also reminds me of my home. I love to burn the essence and it just, it just is clean and calming. So you can see it's just added a really nice glow and it just gives it a really moisturised and flawless finish. Welcome back. Great friend of ours and an absolute champion when it comes to helping Aussie guys look after themselves is our mate Gus Wallen. Gus genuinely practices what he preaches and he recently put himself in Heinze's hands for a health makeover, Joe. Well, Gus has literally transformed before our very eyes. But as you said, Darth, Gus's biggest passion is helping others through his men's mental health charity, Gotcha for Life. The not-for-profit foundation relies on government funding and the donations from some very generous partners. And one of these is Chemist Warehouse, who have supported Gus and his work for several years now. And what better time than Father's Day to give Gus a life-saving gift that'll help him on his crusade for men's mental health and keep him going full steam ahead. Mate, gotcha for life is so important to you, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's my life now, Luke. You know, it was something that wasn't even around five years ago. And oh, to me, it's my life. It's a legacy I want to leave. And I'm just so desperate to teach Australians mental fitness so we can get through not only this COVID situation, but just life in general. If I had to describe Gus in just a few words, I'd say that he's one of the most selfless, giving and generous people that I've ever met in my entire life. His work is literally life-changing, but also life-saving, because you have no idea what one connection, what one Zoom, what one Skype, what one interaction can do for someone's mental health, and it might transform someone's life to maybe thinking negative thoughts to actually making some really incredible long-term positive change. Now, Gus, normally we'd be in studio for this like last year, but with the current conditions, we're socially distancing, we're outside. Huge welcome to Mel from Chemist Warehouse. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining me. us at Bill Gola today. Thank you for having me. And look, I'm here today so happy on behalf of the Chemist Warehouse team to be able to present this check to you. Um, from all of us all throughout Australia, uh, we've been raising money Australia-wide for your foundation and to help you continue to do that. And, absolutely life-saving work that you do. So thank you and congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, wow. Look at that. 
The thing about Chemist Warehouse and their support of Gotcha for Life is that I wouldn't be around doing what I do without them. It's as simple as that. So it's a, it's a very big deal for me. This was just such an organic fit for us because we are the house of wellness and we acknowledge that wellness incorporates both physical well-being and mental fitness as well, so they just go hand in hand. Gus, what does this amount of money mean? How life-changing is this going to be for so many people? Well, I honestly believe there's, there's hundreds of thousands of people can now get the programs, especially with us now being having a virtual program. People can just log on at home. They don't have to go to a central spot. And, um, you know, I'm just so thrilled because I think with the pandemic in particular, these next couple of years are going to be really, really tight. It's going to be very, very difficult. So we're going to be there to build mental fitness, and we could not do it without Chemist Warehouse. You've been our number one supporter since day one. So, Mel, this means so much. So life-saving money. So thank you so much. Very welcome. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks, Lukey. I wish we could all hug now, but <laughs> hopefully in a few months. <laughs> says that if you love a man in your life, you need to let him know it's OK not to be OK. We're just so proud to be able to highlight Gus and all the great work he does here on the House of Wellness. And you often get a text from Gus saying, got you for life, mate, checking in, making sure you're OK. So great work, as always, from uh, Gus Warland. You can head to our website to find out more on Gotcha for Life or anything else from today's show. And we say it each week, but this week there are a million more reasons to give our friends at Chemist Warehouse a huge thank you today. Joe. you and Emma Murray are still doing some great work on your podcast. Yes, it's called Best of You in the House of Wellness. And why don't you spend some time with your day today? Sit down and listen to the podcast. It's all about mental health. It can really give you a lift today. Available at podcastoneaustralia.com.au. You can tune into the House of Wellness radio show with Joe and GQ every Sunday and have a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Stay well and we'll see you next time. Now, Dars, there's just one more little thing, really? actually. We that, were gone. Yeah, no, well, no, no. You thought so, but um, we've got a little surprise for you, wow. actually, yes. Which um, Am I nervous? Kind of... Well, <laughs> now I am. It's just a little surprise that we organised from your beautiful wow. kids to you. Jeez, so, yeah. So just press play. Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> 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 Thank you for everything that you've done. You're, you're really supportive for all of us. For um, <laughs> even though you're extremely busy, you always you always find time to um, do, go for kicks of the footy with us, and always yeah, always do stuff that's in our best interest. So thank you very much. Thanks, Dad, for supporting me in everything I do and, and in your spare time, always go for kicks of the footy with me, just like Sam. Thanks, Dad, for always doing all the stuff I like, like if it's boxing on the court, going for a kick of the footy with us three, sometimes Sienna, <laughs> taking the dog for a walk, everything. It's really nice. Uh, Thanks for always making me laugh and always supporting me. It's good. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I've shed a few tears lately, uh, Joe. That's as nice a present as you could get, I reckon, for Father's Day. Look at the dog. Look at that. That's a good snapshot. Happy Father's Day, Joe. Oh, thank you so much. That's as nice as it gets, Joe. That's as good a surprise. So, um... The fact you got all four of them to sit down and do that is a miracle. So. You have a beautiful family. Yeah. And I get the feeling you do lots of kicks of the footy with them. <laughs> yeah, it's a common theme, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's